Hey guys, okay, so I wanted to make a video for people that are in the US and trying to install the OSJ Duetto Mark II water heater that you see at my feet. Um, it's a little different than um, some of the other wiring components that I've done. And I had a bunch of questions and I sort of exhausted every line of communications with OSJ and anybody else who would take my questions just because of the funkiness of their documentation. Um, okay, first off, this Duetto, it's the Mark II, it's 10 liter, whatever the hell that is in gallons, cares, but it's the 10 liter. It's the 12 volt system, all right? Now they, they have this comes with a 200 volt, 240 volt system for a plug. But since we're in the States, you know, like, where's that? A plug like that is going to be 120. And this is inside the van. That was actually the plug for my previous um, water heater that I wanted to put in there. This one's got a lot better space usage. So more efficient with space. So I'm going to use this one. In any case, a couple of things about the documentation. First of all, it, it calls for a 50 amp uh 12 volt uh, circuit which is ridiculous ridiculous 50 amps ridiculous these wires here that they provide these are essentially 12 awg um in in metric world or australia or whatever these are like 50 millimeter or something like that these will fry if you had power if you had a surge going in through this machine somehow that was 50 amps. That circuit, that sorry, that fuse would not protect these wires at all. It wouldn't. It wouldn't um, flip or uh, break um, until, or I would say before the wires were fried. So I don't know what the hell is wrong with them, but 30 amp fuse is what you're going to use for this. 30 amp, 12 volt fuse. Um, my panel is right in there underneath that cover. And basically, these are this is the the Romex I have coming out of there. This is marine grade, and since it's a 30 amp fuse, we use 10 AWG. The AWG wire chart is going to be your bible on all of this stuff you do for the van. So 10 AWG, 30 amp fuse, and this sucker itself, in the documentation, it's saying it draws 25 amps, which is fine. Why are they? want you to go with a 50 amp fuse which would really require this wire to be like six or eight awg uh let alone the fact that my panel won't even take a fuse higher than 30 okay so that's the first issue i have with with this device um and you know they've sold millions of these things so when you when you get back to them and they ask them the questions are sort of like Hey, you know, we've sold millions of them and they've never had a problem, which is fine, I guess, but not fine. <laughs> so that's the first issue I have with the OSJ. Uh, the other one is just kind of a nitpick. They're like, do not use paddle connectors ever. And they have a picture of like a fried paddle connector. Well, it's probably because of that 50 amp fuse. I'm just going to say, but whatever. They want you to use... This is, an, I didn't even know this, man. This is an Anderson connector. It's a heavy, heavy duty connector um, for essentially, this is 10 AWG, this is 12 AWG, very close. Um, two big paddles come through here, um, and I'll have pictures um, in the bio, like what was going on with that, but the paddles go inside this housing and then the housing connects. Um, and it's a, just a really ruggedized, hardcore kind of a uh, connector for your wires. Hey, you know, I'm all for overdoing it. But everybody who buys this thing is, is using 12 volt. is like running to Amazon trying to figure out what the hell an Anderson connector is. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then on the switch side, you've got like the thinnest wire I've ever seen in my life. This is basically a relay um that we'll talk about in a, in a second but you know 
they want you to use an Anderson connector for this as well. I'm like, F that, man. I'm using wire connectors. It's good enough for a high voltage house. Um, it's good enough. It's going to be good enough for the, this implementation. And I even went to 10 AWG just for the switching itself. And look how it's connected into this chintzy little 16 gauge. So I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of questioning some of the, the documentation. There is a wire gauge chart in their documentation. If you can, if you can understand it and figure that out, you let me know, because it was telling me essentially, <laughs> it was telling me massive wire sizes for this thing. Anyway, we're not doing that. Everything's good to go. I've checked in with a couple of builders had it do you know they basically in the states have, have implemented this thing like hundreds of times so the first thing you're going to do if you're in the states you're going to take that 240 volt wire that's sticking out with this weird aussie plug and just cut it just cut that thing off and just shunt it wrap it up you'll never see it again the next thing you're going to do is go to amazon and get your stupid anderson clip and I've even, um, on the ends here, uh, just because it was funky, the way it kind of connected in, I used some heat shrink. So that's a very rugged, I'm, I'm like actually impressed with how strong that's going to be. Shouldn't have any failure. Okay, so you're going to need 10, 10 2 AWG wire. So two strand and Romex, or you can do cowboy like a lot of people I see and they just have like wires, no Romex, and they just like, have these little wires running all over the place. So the next thing I'm going to do is tell you how to wire this thing so it actually works with 12 volt after you cut that 240 volt wire. And I don't know if this is going to be easy to see, but this is essentially how I wired this. All right. Now, the main the main power is this thick stuff here that goes straight over to your fuse box and your 30 amp uh, fuse. Okay, that's no big deal. Straight across. We have the Anderson clip in there. All good. Uh, actually, I'll, <clears throat> I also got a uh, thermostat for this as well. You can buy that from them. They ship it over from Australia, and that just plugs in. It's just easy, no big deal. It's a, just an easy plug. The next are those those uh, those two little wires, which are these. And there's your switch. All right. So you're gonna have to get from the battery to the switch back to the device. And this is how I've wired it. Black's coming off, goes straight to the device from the battery. And that's gonna be, that's gonna be at the end of my Lynx distributor. There's a, a neutral and a positive on the ends of the distributor. So you just get like a little uh, ring connector and just put it right on there. You're not gonna have a fuse or anything. You're gonna just run 10 to straight out from that, red and black. And then the black is going gonna, is gonna to connect straight into this little guy that they have, okay? So here's the Romex that says battery. That's coming straight from, straight from my, straight from my links. Red and black, boom. Black's going right here. Okay, same Romex, but the black is going to go all the way through to this guy here. Okay. Now then, with the red... Red is going to go from the Lynx distributor all the way to the switch. Okay, so here we go. Here's the battery that, that's connected to the Lynx distributor. There's the red wire, and here's a switch. This is going to this is going all the way over my ceiling and ending up here. All right, I'm going to put a switch on that, but that's just basically closing the circuit. All right, so red's coming all the way through, going to the switch. Now let's go back up to the switch here. Here's the red on the switch, and this black is essentially going to act as a, a positive as well. So you're going to, the purists out there, I get it, it's weird, but <laughs> this is one Romex, we're going to use each side of this. The switch is going to close this connection, right? Once that's closed, that black is going to come back here. And that's going to hook up to the red to close that connection to this unit here. Now what that does is, even though you're plugged in to your fuse and your battery bank, 
with the main power, it's not always going to run. All right. The only time you want this unit to run because it pulls a lot of amps, it's like 26 amps when it's running, is when you're stopped or whenever you want to like start getting hot water, you just turn your switch on and that will basically act as a relay, connect everything together. Once this is connected to the unit, everything turns on and you're good to go for, for the, uh, the 12 volt system. So kind of going back over this, here's a little red wire from the, uh, from the unit that's gonna connect up to the black. Black goes all the way to the switch. It's gonna act as a secondary red. That would be a red out, a positive out. The positive in is the same Romex and it's going all the way back to the battery. In this case, those connectors, the neutral and the positive um, on the Lynx distributor, right? And also it's important to note, when, the only time that this is getting power is when the main switch is on. So that's, that's how it's gonna work. Now, before I plugged in the water, I wanted to test all the electrical just to make sure that thing's not a dud um, and that it didn't get damaged in shipping and everything else. I filled this up uh, from the hose. Took a while because of the, the air gap release, like wasn't set up. I just used some stuff that was laying around. I'm just using these. I just turned them off so it's not leaking. So I filled it up, which is important to do before you start messing around with the, with the power. You can't run this uh, unless it's got water in it. You'll just, like fry the the solenoid inside. So that's essentially it. And what I'll do is I'll show you proof of concept on this. So this whole guy is going to fit into this whole mess of unbelievableness. Uh, the switch is going all the way up here through the ceiling all the way back down and it's going to terminate here. This is ultimately going to get cleaned up, but this is where the switch is going to be. And here's the thermostat. Uh, so I can read the, um, the, you know, the, the heat, um, levels and everything else from, from this stupid duo, um, when it's turned on. So what I'll do right now is simulate um, you know, having a switch on here and completing this circuit. And believe me, I know it's weird to see red and black closing a circuit. That's really never what you would see or want to see in a house or <laughs> it's just, don't worry. I can't really do this with the phone. Let's see here. So I don't know if you heard that, but it just clicked on. And there's the readout, which is only gonna read out if it's on 12 volt. That switch right there, I've just taped it shut because that's the switch over to 240 volt. We're not gonna ever use that. And then we look up to our thermostat and it's good to go. So there's the switch. And if I turn it off by pulling them apart, that's off and the unit's off. And even though it's connected to the battery, it's not drawing any power. So um, some of the wiring you may do in your van, like with a water pump is a lot more straightforward, but this one, you're actually connecting it to the battery at all times. But the only time that the relay is ever really enforced is when you have it switched on, which is to save your battery bank, which is a good, good um, feature. Um, and that's it. That's, that's really all there is. That took me way too much research and just kind of like asking around to get this thing so that I'm comfortable with it and understand. Um, I did reach out to OSJ and they were pretty good up to a point where I started to point out the circuitry and then they just turned into like, just, you know, kind of a, <laughs> it's a mess. Um, anyway, good good customer service there. I think they need some help with their with their dock. It's like I said, it's it's got some serious issues, man. Fifty amp fusing is ridiculous. There's nothing in this van that's a fifty amp fuse. I just I'm not understanding at all what what they're talking about. So 
that's it. Uh, I hope this helped you guys, anybody. Um, I tried to get straight to the point, and I don't have an intro or any of that god awful music. Or <laughs> and also, a lot of the stuff on YouTube was all about the plumbing. The plumbing's the easy part. The electrical is what I just showed you, and hopefully, uh, you got some value out of this video, and it came out well. All right, cheers and good luck on your build.